Hey guys, Jared here. It's been a long time since we last talked. <laughs> but today we're going to go ahead and learn how to resize our table view cells to the size of a UI text view. This is something that I've had to use in my own application and I feel like sharing it with you guys as I think it'd be helpful. And also, yes, I'm sorry for the lack of content. Things have been crazy. They're cooling down now, so I should be able to pump out two or three videos every week now. So, woo! <laughs> Anyway, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it and learn how it's done. All right, so let's go ahead, pop into Xcode and create a new Xcode project. Then once you're brought onto this beautiful screen, let's go ahead, create a single view application, click next, product name, you can go ahead and call this whatever you want, it's your own project, do it's your life decisions, make whatever life decisions you want. Um, language Swift, devices universal, go ahead and click next. And then now we can go ahead and create our project. And then now that once we have that, we can go ahead and make this bigger, and then we can head over here to our main dot storyboard. Now inside of here, we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of that view controller that's on there, delete it, kick its butt out of that main dot storyboard. It doesn't belong there, but seriously, just load up the storyboard, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and delete that view controller that's on there, and we're gonna go ahead and add a table view controller right onto that. Then inside of this table view controller right here, we have one prototype cell, as you can see right there. So we're gonna go ahead and utilize that prototype cell and add on there a UI text view. So now we let's go ahead and add that UI text view on there. So this is the text view that we're gonna be utilizing inside of this uh, prototype cell. And then once we have this cell created, we're gonna go ahead and take that table view cell. We're gonna head over here to the identifier and set that as cell. Now with this text view right here, it's very important that you keep this in mind where how we set up our constraints. So the way that we do this is I'm gonna go ahead and right click from my text view to the content view right here. And I'm gonna say leading, trailing, top and bottom space to container margin. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter to all of that. And then also over here inside of the attributes inspector here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off scrolling enabled. And the problem with having scrolling enabled is it's like, well, why do I need to resize it if they can just scroll it? So what you do with disabling scrolling is making it so it automatically resizes it. And that's pretty much it for now. We're gonna go into the programming in just a minute. But I just wanna explain that this UI text view right here has a, a ton of text right there. So we wanna go ahead and trial run this with all this text right there and see if we can make all that text fit into one cell. So the way that I'm gonna do this is open up my assistant editor here and of course we need to go over here to our view controller.swift first and we're gonna go ahead and switch our view controller to a UI table view controller like so. And then now we should be able to go ahead and hit command S to save that. Hit over here to our main.storyboard and now we can go over here to the identity inspector, go to the class, and we're gonna go ahead and hook up our view controller. So now we can edit uh, this view controller that we created and the table cells uh, via our view controller.swift file. And then now what we wanna do is populate these table view cells and set their size accordingly. So I'm gonna go ahead and say table view, um, let's go ahead and pick the number of rows in section. I'm gonna go ahead and return one right now. Then our crucial one is table view self or index path. So we wanna go ahead and grab that one as well. And let's go ahead and grab our cell. So I'm gonna say let my cell equal my table view dot DQ reusable cell with identifier. And then the identifier is just going to be capital C and then ELL. That is exactly how we set it up. If we click on our cell, you'll see that we gave it the reuse identifier of cell. So you wanna make sure that those match, otherwise you'll get a, an error like Sigabert. Now let's go ahead and continue on. And then now with the cell, I'm gonna say as a UI table view cell. And then after this, we're gonna go ahead and return our cell. And now we should be able to reference that uh, UI text view later on when we wanna change all of the text. And it looks like we just need to delete this exclamation point right after as and put it right after a DQ reusable cell with identifier. And there we have it. So now we can reference the cell and change the text view accordingly. And also just to be sure, you need to make sure that this is the initial view controller. Otherwise it'll give you that black screen. So go ahead and build and run that again. All right, so here you can see that we have that table view cell. And of course the UI view is displaying all that text, but it's not conforming to that text properly. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that it does. Let's go ahead and add the magical function of view will appear. So with the view will appear here, this is where we're gonna go ahead and say table view dot, and then this is where we say estimated row height. 
So with our estimated row height here, this is going to be what do I guesstimate uh, the row size is going to be? If it's going to be larger, then you put it at, say, 500. If it's going to be smaller, then you put it at, say, 50 or something like that. But the thing that you want to keep in mind is the closer you are to the actual height of each of your table view cells, uh, the less performance you have to take. So it's important to keep this in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and say the estimated row height will be equal to, uh, let's say, 100. And then finally, in order to get it to resize to whatever the content is inside of that table view, all we need to do is say table view dot row height will be equal to, and this is where we say UI table view automatic dimension. So this is where it's gonna go ahead and take uh, the stuff that's inside of that table view and make it resize accordingly. So let's go ahead and build and run this and see where we're at. And... Boom, it automatically resizes to the UI text view text. And you can fill this with, uh, with whatever text you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and add more. We can copy that and just have a ton of text in there and you can use it however you want to your heart's content. So let's go ahead and see if that fits in there. It should definitely work. And as you can see, even with all that text in there, it still fills into that one table view. Now also you can apply this to several different objects. So let's say I make this uh, cell pretty big right here. Let's go ahead and add a UI uh, text view. Let's go ahead and add a UI text view right in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and add this towards the bottom here. And then also I'm gonna go ahead and add, let's say a text field to the top here and let's also say a button. But the thing that I want to happen with the button and the UI text field is I want these to stay the same size. So we just set up our constraints accordingly. So the way that we do that is I'm gonna go ahead and right click from my button over to my content view. I'm gonna say leading, trailing, top space. Then we wanna go ahead and right click from the button to the button and maintain that height. Then we can go from say our text field right here, or if it's a label or whatever, do the do exactly what I'm doing here with whatever objects you're working with. So with our text field right here, I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing, leading, trailing. And then for our top and bottom space, I'm gonna add some vertical spacing between this and the button, as well as some vertical spacing between that and the text field. Then with our text field right here, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the content view, leading, trailing, and then bottom space to container margin. And also for the text field right here, I'm gonna make sure that I maintain that height. Now the only thing that should be resizing is this. It's not gonna resize the button nor the text field. That's something that I basically just wanted to share with you guys. And of course with your UI text field, you wanna make sure that the scrolling is disabled. That way it doesn't shrink on us and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and build and run that. So as you can see, we have our button up here. It's maintaining the same size. We also have our UI text field in there. Can't really see it because simulator. But also we have that UI text field that is resizing our scene. Um, just goes to show that you're able to resize anything and everything inside of your UI table view using this one method that we added inside of our view will appear. The only thing that this mainly doesn't apply to is image views. With image views, things get really interesting because with image views, if you try using the same method, it'll resize to the size of the actual image inside of the image view, and it'll create a bunch of errors for you. So um, that's the only thing that it really doesn't apply to. If you want me to go over that in a future tutorial, I can. It takes uh, quite a bit of work to get it working properly. Anyway, there you have it. Hopefully that helped fill in the gaps of how to do that. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button down below and also expect many more tutorials to come. Anyway, have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.